Day 429, Monday, June 3rd, 2 Kings 10 32 36, 2 Kings 12 6 16, 2 Kings 13 1 2, 2 Chronicles 24 6 14. 2 Kings 10 32 36 NKJV In those days the Lord began to cut off parts of Israel, and Hazel conquered them and all the territory of Israel from the Jordan eastward, all the land of Gilead, Gad, Reuben, and Manasseh, from Aror, which is by the river Arnon, including Gilead and Bashan. Now the rest of the acts of Jehu, all that he did, and all his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Jehu rested with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. Then Jehoahaz his son reigned in his place. And the period that Jehu reigned over Israel in Samaria was twenty-eight years. 2 Kings 12 6-16 NKJV Now it was so, by the twenty-third year of King Jehoash, that the priests had not repaired the damages of the temple. So King Yehoash called Jehoiada the priest and the other priests, and said to them, Why have you not repaired the damages of the temple? Now therefore, do not take more money from your constituency, but deliver it for repairing the damages of the temple. And the priests agreed that they would neither receive more money from the people, nor repair the damages of the temple. Then Jehoiada the priest took a chest, bored a hole in its lid, and set it beside the altar, on the right side as one comes into the house of the Lord, and the priests who kept the door put there all the money brought into the house of the Lord. So it was, whenever they saw that there was much money in the chest, that the king's scribe and the high priest came up and put it in bags, and counted the money that was found in the house of the Lord. Then they gave the money, which had been apportioned, into the hands of those who did the work, who had the oversight of the house of the Lord, and they paid it out to the carpenters and builders who worked on the house of the Lord, and to masons and stonecutters, and for buying timber and hewn stone, to repair the damage of the house of the Lord, and for all that was paid out to repair the temple. However there were not made for the house of the Lord basins of silver, trimmers, sprinkling bowls, trumpets, any articles of gold or articles of silver, from the money brought into the house of the Lord. But they gave that to the workmen, and they repaired the house of the Lord with it. Moreover they did not require an account from the men into whose hand they delivered the money to be paid to workmen, for they dealt faithfully. The money from the trespass offerings and the money from the sin offerings was not brought into the house of the Lord. It belonged to the priests. 2 Kings 13 1 2 NKJV In the twenty third year of Joash the son of Ahaziah, king of Judah, Jehoahaz the son of Jehu became king over Israel and Samaria, and reigned seventeen years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and followed the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. He did not depart from them. 2 Chronicles 24 6 14 NKJV So the king called Jehoiada the chief priest, and said to him, Why have you not required the Levites to bring in from Judah and from Jerusalem the collection, according to the commandment of Moses the servant of the Lord and of the assembly of Israel, for the tabernacle of witness? For the sons of Athaliah, that wicked woman, had broken into the house of God, and it also presented all the dedicated things of the house of the Lord to the balls. Then at the king's command they made a chest, and set it outside at the gate of the house of the Lord. And they made a proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem to bring to the Lord the collection that Moses the servant of God had imposed on Israel in the wilderness. Then all the leaders and all the people rejoiced, brought their contributions, and put them into the chest until all had given. So it was, at that time, when the chest was brought to the king's official by the hand of the Levites, and when they saw that there was much money, that the king's scribe and the high priest's officer came and emptied the chest, and took it and returned it to its place. Thus they did day by day, and gathered money in abundance. The king and Jehoiada gave.
it to those who did the work of the service of the house of the Lord. And they hired masons and carpenters to repair the house of the Lord, and also those who worked in iron and bronze to restore the house of the Lord. So the workmen labored, and the work was completed by them. They restored the house of God to its original condition and reinforced it. When they had finished, they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehoiada. They made from it articles for the house of the Lord, articles for serving and offering, spoons and vessels of gold and silver. And they offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord continually all the days of Jehoiada. Daily Deep Dive, the UCG reading plan states, Note on the names of the kings, the passages for the next few days refer to Joash or Yehoash as being kings of Israel and Judah. This can be confusing to the casual reader. In 2 Kings 11 2 the king of Judah is referred to as Joash, while in 2 Kings 12 2 he is referred to as Yehoash. The name of the king of Israel is also written both ways, even in the same chapter. 2 Kings 13 9 refers to him as Joash, while the next verse spells his name Yehoash. In 2 Chronicles the king of Judah is referred to as Yehoash. The New International Version uses Yehoash in 2 Kings 13 9-10 in both places, while other versions use the original Hebrew spellings. The answer to the dilemma is that, as in the cases of other Israelite kings, they are variations of the same name and are interchangeable. And there was a king Joash, or Yehoash, in both Judah and Israel. For the purpose of these notes, we have followed the practice of other commentators in referring to the king of Judah as Joash and the king of Israel as Yehoash. In Israel, during Jehu's reign, Israel began to pay tribute to Assyria in a partly successful effort to buy Assyrian protection, as a vassal state, from the Arameans, Syrians. An inscription of Shalmaneser III engraved upon his famous black obelisk, now in the British Museum, recorded, the tribute of Jehu, son, i.e., royal successor, of Omri, silver, gold, bowls of gold, chalices of gold, cups of gold, vases of gold, lead, scepter for the king, and spear, shafts, I have received, quoted by T.C. Mitchell, The Bible in the British Museum, 2000, p. 47. Yet, because Shalmaneser III was occupied with political pressure in the east, Haziel, king of Syria, took advantage of the situation, harassing Israel throughout, Jehu's, long reign. After Jehu's death, Haziel marched freely into Israel and even into Judah, 2 Kings, 12 17, 18, 13 22. The important point of these verses is that the attacks of Haziel were part of God's judgment on Israel. Nelson Study Bible, note on 1032-33. It is Jehu's failure to complete the task of removing pagan worship that leads to God again taking action against Israel through the hand of the king of Syria. Verses 32-33. Yet even with this punishment, when Jehu died, his son Yehoahaz failed to correct the wrongdoing. 2 Kings 13 1-2 In Judah, meanwhile, in Judah, the Levitical priests had not undertaken the task committed to them by Joash to repair the temple, 2 Kings 12 4-5. The collection commanded by Moses was of three types, verse 4, money collected in the census, Exodus 30-14, money assessed on personal vows, Leviticus 27 1-8, and voluntary offerings. Evidently, the priests were considering all that was given to them to be their personal income. Apparently the priests were unwilling to divert their income to the repair project, and were incapable of doing the work themselves. So Joash had them hand the money over directly to others who would do the work, Bible Reader's Companion, Note on 2 Kings 12 6-8. Disappointed with the priests, Joash summoned Jehoiada the priest, and arrangements were made for the repair of the temple to be handed over to skilled workmen. 
the king had Jehoiada make a special box to collect the offerings, and he issued a proclamation through the land. The response of the people was magnificent and more than what was required for repairing the temple. The temple repairs were placed ahead of other requirements, yet there was still sufficient left over to provide for the various articles for the temple. Such was the honesty of those given responsibility over the funds that they were not required to keep accounts of the money supplied. And the workmen not only restored the temple to its original splendor, but even reinforced it. Sadly, the spiritual commitment of the people exceeded that of those who were supposed to be their teachers and good examples in following the ways of God. And, 2 Kings 12, verse 16, in the early chapters of Leviticus, instructions are given for which animals were to be brought for trespass offering. Why here is money being given? John Jill's commentary states, which was the money persons at a distance sent for their trespass and sin offerings instead of cattle, with which the sacrifices were bought, and what remained of the money was not brought into the temple, and made use of in the above manner.